Hello and welcome to this session. Thank you for joining. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to shift mindsets from data product to data as a product. My name is Omar Salem and I'm a senior product manager uh, with Booking.com. I have about 13 years of experience between uh, project management and product management, uh, precisely about uh, six years in product management. And uh, I've worked uh, previously uh, with uh, Delivery Hero and the Jumia Group. And throughout my experience with different business domains uh, and different kinds of products, uh, I've always uh, uh, had the uh, belief and realization that data is the most important uh, thing that we uh, as product managers can uh, always rely on to understand the behaviors of our customers and the needs of our stakeholders in general. And of course, also to justify and validate any kind of hypothesis um, that that uh, that we're thinking about. And uh, especially recently, as digitization is growing, um, also the amount of data is growing exponentially. Uh, with uh, the technology getting more and more into our daily lives, uh, and our daily routines, uh, data that is gathered, different types of data uh, relevant to in different ways to different domains are uh, always exponentially increasing. Uh, about 90% of the world's data that is existing right now was um, created or acquired within the last two years. And that implies um, that data, if used correctly and efficiently, can be one of the most uh, valuable assets any organization uh, could possess. <clears throat> but that doesn't just come uh, with all the benefits. It also comes with a lot of challenges in how uh, to manage this um, data, this huge amount of data. So data generally on organizational level, uh, some some uh, in some places uh, up till now it's still managed in silos and it's man it's managed separately between different uh, teams and different kinds of products and they're uh, just maintaining it uh, to enable how the product is working and that causes uh, <coughs> a lot of uh, problems and it's a challenge to manage this, this data because usually it's fragmented between hundreds of systems um and uh, a lot of uh, different applications and products uh, are using it at the same time and also contributing back to it at the same time. Uh, uh, it's usually locked with the legacy systems and legacy databases that causes a lot of fragmentation. Uh, and uh, that leads to having an unclear structure or even uh, dark structures that nobody really knows about and uh, ownership becomes uh, a problem, uh, managing this data, making sure that it's compliant and it's uh, well-maintained um, <clears throat> uh, becomes a very, very uh, big problem. And as a result of that, as I said, uh, many organizations uh, are considered in the dark uh, when it comes to most of the data that they own. And um, this causes... Um, a lot of loss opportunity and uh, uh, misdirection in how to take decisions and how to build better features and better products in general. <laughs> uh, that's why uh, the uh, framework of data mesh was introduced by Zamak Degani, uh, driven by the simple idea uh, that stakeholders within the business, internal stakeholders with the different business domains are the best uh, people to understand their own data. So uh, we're talking about uh, the marketing-related data, finance-related data, uh, um, any kind of specific activities that has its own um, uh, relevance to, to data. They are the most capable and most qualified uh, people inside an organization to handle their own data because they only understand what it takes to manage this data and how to make it more relevant to the business and also uh, how to get the best outcome out of uh, analyzing and processing and working with this data. And this framework of data mesh introduced the first concept of uh, managing data as its own product. Um, there are four core principles for data for the data mesh uh, framework. The first one is data is managed as a product, uh, as I said, and data ownership and architecture is 
something that is domain oriented. Uh, it should be decentralized. But this concept, also these four principles, they balance between total decentralization and actual centralization. So if you're in a specific domain, you are trying to centralize the relevant data that you should own and manage from all over the organization to be centralized within your domain. And when all the uh, different business domains inside the organization do that, the data would be, yes, decentralized, but centralized to uh, some extent relevant to the uh, domain. <clears throat> also, another principle is uh, reaching uh, the level of full self-service with, with these um, different uh, domain-related data. So the optimum case would be if anyone needs to use this data or work with this data, they would be able to self-serve this data uh, to to themselves uh, to reduce, you know, the uh, pressure and uh, uh, and optimize the capacity of the teams that are managing this data. <clears throat> also, that doesn't mean that everyone and every domain is totally free to manage the data however they see with any kind of standards that they uh, decide on. But data governance is something that is very important, and this should be uh, federated somehow. So also there is this balance of what can you decide on your own as a business domain and uh, what kind of global standards that you should be following to make sure that this data is properly served across the organization and to avoid the problems that the data mesh framework was uh, um, actually introduced to solve, right? Uh, within the context of, 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 of this session, we're focusing on uh, data as a product and how to manage, manage your data as its own product. So first, we need to understand what does data product, the normal uh, definition means uh, before going to the next. So basically, data product is a product that is built uh, specifically to generate value or to deliver a specific customer experience based on some data. <clears throat> uh, so they are designed to extract um, insights or uh, some knowledge from data to present them in a useful and an actionable form uh, to build an experience, to guide an experience for uh, users or end uh, customers. Uh, so sometimes they involve uh, normal algorithms, sometimes machine learning is involved, any other advanced type of data analytics might be involved, but the main goal is to how to serve a specific um, uh, user experience. Uh, there is a lot of examples uh, for that, but uh, for example, a customer segmentation tool that uh, segments demographics and you know this kind of analytics uh, to be provided, um, a predicted maintenance system, uh, almost any kind of um, uh, recommendation engines, uh, and also fraud detection systems can be uh, examples for that. Uh, and and try to think on a, on a broader concept. So like re recommendations, uh, recommendation systems based on user behaviors, based on uh, how we uh, how this data would make sense and be put together. Uh, so delivering this end uh, user experience is the goal of a product, but it's based on some data that they are getting from uh, either they are managing uh, themselves in a silo or getting it uh, from elsewhere. <clears throat> data as a product is a concept that is focused that the data itself is the actual product. And the goal here is to uh, manage this data and work with it to extract some more exciting data and some more meaningful data out of it. So we're using data to generate some other data. And this second version of the data is going to be served to other teams internally inside the organization to use it to build data products. Uh, as the first definition uh, entails. Um, so when, when you're working with uh, uh, a data, uh, a set of data, and you're trying to deal with it as a product, you are trying to serve your direct customers, the internal stakeholders, but you are trying also to proxy impact to the end users or the external stakeholders uh, that are using this final product that your internal stakeholder is building. This concept might be a little bit confusing and actually as to make things easier, usually uh, data as a product gets transformed also to data product to make it easier to pronounce and say. Um, but uh, 
the most important thing is to understand the framework and to understand the concept and to apply it when you're trying to work uh, with, with, with data in general or if you're trying to build a strategy or a structure for, for your own company. Um, so again, to sum up this uh, very uh, complicated comparison or uh, misleading comparison, data product versus a data product, uh, data as a product. Uh, so data product is building a product that uses data to operate. It doesn't matter if the data is managed in a silo or centrally sourced or you're getting it from somewhere else externally or internally. You're just building some sort of a customer experience feeding on data. While data as a product, um, you get that the actual data is the product that you are trying to maintain and scale and and uh, and serve to other stakeholders to use it to build data products. And uh, you're trying to produce more impactful data to proxy your impact to the end user. So uh, in order to do that, uh, you need to start thinking about how to apply product thinking in general on data and uh, how to uh, use the different frameworks of product management to manage your data and to make sure that you are uh, cascading this multi-level impact to your internal stakeholders and proxy stakeholders, if we may call them. Uh, the most important thing at the beginning is how you define your scope and how well you define your scope. So as I'm quoting here from Zamak Dagani, uh, for a distributed data platform to be successful, domain data teams must apply product thinking with similar rigor to the data sets that they provide, considering their data assets as their products and the rest of organizations, data scientists, ML, and data engineers as their customers, as we already established. Um, it's very important to define all of these and also to distribute data ownership and the different pipeline implementations uh, to uh, the hand of business domains and to make sure that you have a very, very clear definition of what belongs to you and what doesn't belong to you and uh, have a very well-defined ownership matrix that is aligned with your stakeholders uh, of what you should own and what they should own to be able to have a cluster, a crystal clear vision on, you know, what are you doing? What are you trying to build and what are you trying to achieve? This is something that is very important. And you, uh, there are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself and, um, and discover and work with the different stakeholders to get answers to, uh, such as what is the data scope and what is the uh, scope domain? Uh, what kinds of data and taxonomies uh, that already exist and uh, we need to source? Who needs this data and where is this data flowing from and to? What are your data sources and who's consuming your data? Um, what are the purposes that this data is serving? And is there a way to make it easier to work with or to access this data in the current state and that would be your starting ground? Um, is this data compliant and or actionable or not? And what kind of governance exists uh, right now if you're also at the starting ground? And how can this data be optimized to aid the, the internal stakeholders' needs and create a proxy impact to our external customers. Uh, the last statement is like a how might we statement that is usually used within design thinking. And that's the next step that uh, you should start applying. So after you've defined your ownership, you've defined your scope, you know what you're doing, uh, what you own and what you don't own and what you want to do, uh, with with it in general to like govern the whole thing, uh, you need to start applying the concepts of design thinking to be able to brainstorm and plan and discover what is the actual potential of this data set that you are supposed to be managing. And uh, relevant to that, who are, uh, are your customers? What are their problems and what are their needs and how you can serve them in the best way? So, as most of you probably know, design thinking works by considering human needs and human problems, your end customers' needs and problems, before considering the actual solutions. We're trying to look for a problem. And that's the uh, first step of the double diamond uh, framework, as you can see. So first, you're focusing on the problem space. You try to discover and to define the problems and the needs uh, that, uh, that your uh, customers uh, have. And then you start iterating and thinking about what would be the solutions 
to that. Um, so you need to work with your different internal stakeholders because uh, these are your direct customers. You need to identify them and understand what are their needs, what kind of problems are they trying to solve for their, for their own customers. Uh, and this is the essence of how to manage a data product. Again, you're serving data to an internal stakeholder, and this internal stakeholder is using this data to build uh, um, a, a customer engaging product uh, at some extent. And in order to do that, you need to understand very well the kind of impact that they are trying to uh, give or to uh, build for to be able to give them uh, uh, data and to give them an output of your product that would help them to do that. <clears throat> um, design thinking, as, as we've been saying, is a structured uh, approach to identifying and solving problems. Uh, and um, it has five steps that, that you need to go through with your uh, at least internal stakeholders and uh, to get access or be involved with their own research uh, with their end users. Uh, the first one is uh, to empathize uh, with your customers, to, to really understand their needs and to be able to uh, understand the reason behind everything uh, that, uh, that they are uh, requesting or uh, what is the actual grounds of uh, the needs that they have. Because again, as we established since uh, this setup is domain related, so you in your domain should be the best person to know what is the actual potential of your data set and what is the potential of what it can provide to your internal stakeholders. The classic product management uh, thinking says that if a customer comes to you and says, I just want this, they probably don't know what they want. They want to satisfy like a very, very direct, very basic need. But the work that you should be doing for discovery and validation and revalidation and iterating on that should help you provide, uh, like, you know, uh, ide identify what are the uh, um, uh, actual problems, the root causes, and provide even better solutions to totally eliminate uh, the, the problems or to totally satisfy the need and even. Uh, satisfy uh, its, its, its exponential scaling. Uh, so you, you need to empathize with uh, your customers and your proxy customers. Uh, you need to be able to define uh, the scope, define uh, who are the customers and define uh, the different uh, problems and then work uh, after you identify all the problems and risk and, and, and how the market looks and what you could, uh, the current state and uh, potentially what could happen and so on, you need to start ideating with your internal stakeholders and with your team, every member of the team, whether it's engineers, machine learning scientists, data scientists, analysts, and so on, to start ideating about how to actually solve these uh, problems. And there is a lot of practices that can be done uh just the classic product management practices this can be uh, another discussion for for another time uh and uh definitely you need to work with your internal stakeholders uh to prototype and test the outcomes of uh, delivering this value to them and uh, building the the kind of uh features or specifications in the data product that you are serving to them. You need to understand the impact of what you've built and uh, whether it's meeting the uh, the hypothesis that was given uh, before or not. Because uh, if, if you just deliver uh, on, on requirements and that's it, uh, you would have like uh, a lot of missing pieces in, in your puzzle. Uh, you wouldn't see the, the, the full um, uh, picture and you wouldn't be able to effectively iterate on that. So you need to be involved with the uh, product launches of your internal uh, stakeholders. And uh, you need to be very involved with the experimentation, how they are setting their own experiments and what are the results and how they are planning to iterate on it because also you could support with this uh, iteration. <clears throat> After that comes the other part of how to manage uh, a data product and also a data team, uh, the product engineering part. There is a big part of how the dynamics of the team is managed between a uh, product manager and the engineers in, in the team. And of course, I'm also sure that 
you already know a lot of, about this, I would uh, suggest getting more into uh, how to manage this kind of relation between uh, product managers and engineers and uh, the dynamics of managing such teams and uh, the um, the philosophy of uh, setting this kind of team spirit and collaboration. Uh, but you need to, uh, for, for the scope of this uh, presentation, uh, you need to be focusing on what are the uh, core values or the core principles that needs to be delivered with any piece of your data product, any new piece that is being built or increasing the quality of what has already been done uh, as a legacy system uh, and so on. So data products, um, from an engineering perspective, they need to have six main values or six main attributes. They need to be discoverable, self-describing, interoperable, addressable, trustworthy, and secure. And uh, you could map these uh, objectives or principles to the uh, four main core uh, principles for the data mesh, if you remember uh, on, on one of the first slides. Uh, for being, uh, eventually, you should be leading your strategy into more self-service and uh, for data governance. So let's go a little bit more into these concepts. So discoverable uh, means that um, you need to provide some sort of search capability with the data set and the data stock that you have, with the taxonomy that you have. Uh, if, if your data is could be considered as a product or qualifies to be considered as its own product, that means that you are managing a huge data set, a very, very complicated data set with a very complicated taxonomy. And you need to make it easier for different teams and stakeholders to search through that and understand what data do you actually own, rather than, especially in large organizations, rather than communicating with each and every team. It might be tens or even hundreds of teams in your organization to try to explain all of that to them. You need to shift the uh, responsibility and shift the ability uh, for searching and understanding such taxonomies to, th to them, and you need to provide that um, uh, to them. Also, they should be able to identify uh, through that and through the next uh, principle, they should be able to identify what they need and request access to it. And all of this uh, process in, in, uh, in a perfect world should be somehow automated or at least semi-automated to reduce the pressure and to reduce the uh, burden on your own team and to optimize your own capacity to work on better things. Uh, again, uh, this data should be uh, addressable, it should be understandable, uh, and, and that would lead to more productivity for your team and also for your internal stakeholders. You don't want your team or data analysts or engineers to always be just answering the questions about where is this data, uh, what kind of data do you have, uh, how uh, would that be useful to me, what does it contain, how many records, and so on. So your data needs really to be searchable and addressable. Of course, you need to establish trustworthiness uh, with the quality of data that you have. So you need to establish uh, regular or hopefully also automatic uh, quality checks and quality uh, audits on uh, on your data. And you need to be able to automatically identify or get alerted or um, uh, be aware of any discrepancies that are happening to be able to manage the data in itself, not just the data infrastructure, but the quality of the data. Because uh, as I said, you need to establish this trustworthiness with your internal stakeholders and that they can re rely and, and build products that are fueling customer experiences uh, with the data that you are providing and there shouldn't be any problems with the data quality as much as possible. <clears throat> And uh, again, aiding to the searchability and addressability, uh, your data structure and your data uh, um, uh, information generally should be uh, self-describing. Uh, again, this is mainly to minimize the effort and pressure on your teams and also to allow for more uh, self-serviceability and uh, to um, uh, allow any, any, any uh, internal stakeholder to be able to understand and find what they need out of this data. So stuff like data location, uh, data mapping, uh, example of on how to use uh, this data samples of application, uh, all of that is, is 
things and variables that need to be existing for your data. Uh, so it could be easily understandable and hence uh, it could be extended and scaled to more and more use cases. And uh, of course, it needs to be interoperable uh, throughout the ecosystem of your organization. And that mainly relates to the data governance uh, concept for data mesh. Uh, it should be able to be used anywhere in the organization, it should fit into any other system to be combined with any other uh, data that is coming from other domains or that is uh, being used in some silos for uh, some specific teams for some experiences and, and so on. Uh, it should be uh, compliant to the uh, specific organizational and holistic governance programs that you have. <clears throat> and of course, uh, your data needs to be uh, secured. It shouldn't be automatically available for anyone because you want to prevent any kind of misuse or mis, um, misprocessing for this data. You, you need to protect it from being um, unregulatory edited or uh, modified, whether by intention or by mistake, of course. This also relies within uh, the uh, objective of having uh, global or holistic governance across the organization and to be totally compliant with that. Um, and of course, this also includes uh, managing data access and who uh, would, would be able to uh, play with this data and tracking the usage and tracking the behavior uh, of the different users uh, on how they are applying uh, this data. So to recap the key takeaways that we can get from this, uh, that depending on how data is treated, it could be the most important asset or it could be the biggest lost opportunity for an organization. Um, also, Data Mesh is a framework to balance data centralization and decentralization based on business domains inside the organization. And uh, the main uh, topic for this presentation is the comparison uh, between data product and data as a product and how to make sure that your mindset is at the correct place where the data product is just consuming data to fuel an experience, but data as a product, as a framework, is for governing and generating more interesting data that you could provide to other teams to build data products to deliver value to the end customers for the organization. So in a way, you're kind of having a proxy impact uh, to the uh, direct and end customer of, uh, of the organization. And as we discussed, product thinking and design thinking principles makes a huge difference on how you manage data as a product. Um, here I added some uh, useful reads and uh, references. Uh, if you can uh, see them or check them to read uh, to know more about data as a product. Uh, of course, this is a huge uh, topic. It needs much more time to discuss. Uh, but I was aiming to give you uh, a highlight and uh, um, a generic view, holistic view over this concept. And uh, I'm hoping that this would be beneficial for your day-to-day -day activities and managing data products. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn with any questions, discussion points. I'm always available. And um, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day.